to another edition of Maps Insider. I'm Allie D. This is Roe Parish, and it is the month of March, which means it's time for some March Madness. That's right. Now, we're not talking about all that dancing that they do in the college. We're talking about the Mass Playoff March. That's right. And Jason Terry is back out on the court. And not only that, but we're going to show you who the best Mass bowler is. Oh, interesting. But first, let's check out what happened last week with a certain Cash Soroy. The last week for the Mavs was a microcosm of the entire season, with exhilarating highs mixed in with some hard to swallow lows. And it looked for a time as if their Friday night battle with the Thunder was going to be one of the lows, as Oklahoma City outscored Dallas by 10 in the third quarter and eventually took a 12 point lead late. But just then it became time for one of those exhilarating highs. Dirk Nowitzki would score 10 points from that point as Dallas surged with a 16-0 run that set up a dramatic finish to remember. And again, the Paul Dirk's number. Checked by Collison, who's playing with five fouls. Dirk trying it, laying it in. There was contact there. Now we're caught about a shot. And they'll go Dirk's way. Now the double team spins away from it. Chance for three the hard way. The Mavs last lead was at 61 60. They scored 12 in a row to tie it. Dirk puts it in. Kid for his first points of the game, and what a time to deliver them. Westbrook is now 9 of 28 for the four tonight. Dirk steps into a three and hits it. That's the first one he's taken since the All Star break. A bucket makes it a two possession lead. He finds Kidd to meet the shot clock. Down the How about Jason Kidd in overtime? The Mavs won it 110 to 108 in a game that most felt shouldn't have been that close. As you probably noticed, Sunday against the Raptors, Jason Terry made his return to the court less than a month after having surgery to repair a broken finger on his left non shooting hand. The Mavs' sixth man specialist played 18 minutes, wearing a protective glove on his hand, and scored eight points. And while his numbers will continue to rise as he gets more comfortable, his teammates are already appreciating the infusion of energy that can only be gained when the jet is on the runway. He's great. I mean, he's, he's our energizer from the bench. He's our scorer. He's all over the place. He's a one-man fast break usually when we get a stop and the kid throws it along the sideline. And, uh, we, we definitely need him back to make this push here for the playoffs these last, whatever, 24, 25 games. The crowd gave me a great ovation, but I had to shake it off quick because Jay Kidd was too busy calling my play. And uh, so I got out there. The timing was a little off, uh, but hey, we got the win, and you know, the guys were, were feeding off uh, of the energy of the crowd and, and myself, but you know, total team effort. Of course, also Sunday against the Raptors, Jason Kidd made his mark on the NBA record books yet again hitting Brandon Bass late in the third quarter for assist number 10,000 in his illustrious career. He handed out 15 on the night and is the fourth player in league history to hit 10K. He trails John Stockton, Mark Jackson, and Magic Johnson. Well, I told him going into the game, I said, you know I'm back now, so you're going to have more than 10 assists. And so he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just fun to be a part of. I mean, a you know, record like that. Uh, you know, he's, he's a Hall of Famer, and it's just fun to be a part of him. Uh, I told him the day after the game, I'm, I'm going to chase him hard, but I don't think I'll get there. Don't think you'll get 10,000? No. <laughs> Somebody said I can play another 60, th 60 years and I won't get there, so. <laughs> there was yet another reason to remember Sunday's game against the Raptors, or if you're J.J. Barea, a reason you might want to forget about it. In the second quarter, Barea was showing off some of his signature hustle by diving for a ball lost by Jose Calderon when Teeth met Hardwood. J.J. broke two of his teeth and has since had surgery to repair them. And just like any good fight story, this one has a good punchline. You got to see the other guy. In this case, the other guy was the AAC floor, and it took a beating. Yeah, that was tough. I mean, uh, he made a great, great hustle play. And the guy just kind of bounced on his head and uh, knocked his tooth out. But, you know, he's a tough little guy. He came right back in the game. Uh, and, you know, the, the dentist these days is so good, you know, who look at me. So <laughs> he'll be, uh, he'll, he'll look good for, for the ladies soon again. 
Hey, Allie, real quick. What? what is the best bowling movie of all time? Hmm, best bowling movie, Kingpin. Um, incorrect. It is The Big Lebowski. Thanks what? for playing, but we do have some nice take home hmm, gifts. I for would you. definitely like to see some documentation on that, and since you probably don't have it, let's take a little time to watch some of the Mavs go bowling. Yeah, in fact, Josh Howard had a big time celebrity bowling event, and uh, of course, Mavs Insider was there to check it out. When you're on a roll, you're on a roll. And that's exactly what was going down earlier this week at the 300 Dallas Bowling Center in Addison. As Josh Howard invited his teammates to be part of the second annual Josh Howard Foundation Celebrity Bowling Event. In addition to getting a chance to rub shoulders and share the lane with some of their heroes, Mavs fans got a chance to take pictures and big on all kinds of signed merchandise. Basically, a buongiorno, Ro. How is your Italian? You know, it's about as good as that guy in the commercial that grazed the cheese, okay? You know, fettuccine, linguine, bikini, zucchini. You know, right? I honestly have nothing to say for the first time ever since we started this show about that. That was weird. All right, anyways, I bring it up because James Singleton actually started his career in Italy. And you know, if we had like a one on one interview to roll right now, of course we would do it, okay? It's bad. It's a bad accent. <laughs> When you look at the time that you spent away from the industry. I love it when we see that upcoming schedule graphic and we know that Kobe Bryant is in the near future. I cannot wait to beat those Lakers. You know what I can't either, Mavs fans. Can we do it? Of course we can. And when we do, we're going to bring it all to you right here on Mavs Insider every Friday at 6.30. So I'm Ro Parrish. I'm Allie D. And we will see you next week. Same bad time, same Mavs channel. Bye-bye.